Welcome to the Ross Common County Board of Commissioners special meeting. September 20th, 2023. Only thing we're going to be discussing today is labor union benefits negotiation. Let's stand for the pledge. Mark, would you like to lead? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Here. Astrid. Here. Wilson. Here. Milburn. Here. Censor. Here. Number four, approval of the agenda. I'll second. Discussion. Clerk, call roll, please. Yes. Wolfson? Yes. Milburn? Yes. Censor? Yes. Russo? Yes. Agreed. Number five, public comment. Is there any public comment? Is there anybody on Zoom with public comment? Number six, new business, A, labor Mr. union. Yes. We do have a public. Oh. Hi, I am Roberta Carey. I'm the chair of the Ross County County. Put your mic on, please. Sorry about that. I'm the chair of the Ross County County Commission on Aging. I came to your meeting this morning to simply inform you of where we are at. Uh, Mary Fry, our director, resigned last Friday. Yesterday, we held a special meeting. We have appointed a interim director while we search for a permanent director. Are there any questions? Name, please. Deborah Looney. Deborah Looney is our interim director. Thank you. Thanks, Madam Chair. Thank you. See you one. <laughs> Number six, new business. Uh, who would like to start it off? Labor union benefit negotiations. You had sheets in front of you and everything. This is new to me. Did the union rep want to come up to the front table or? Cody, do you want to have any input? Sure. Um, my name is Mike Max. I'm a uh, president of the Command Officers Union. Um, met as a group and asked us to uh, let you know which plan we preferred. Um, and that would be option B. Um, in our proposal, was no employee contribution towards the premium, um, locked in retiree health insurance monthly supplement for all current full-time employees, and a 1% cost of living raise on top of the 1% agreed to in the contract. So for a total of 2%, that's what we would prefer. Thank you, Mike. Okay, discussion from Board members, commissioners. I feel comfortable with that. Mr. Chair, I do also. Rex. Um, I'm not saying that people don't deserve a raise, but because of our budget constraints, I don't know if we can afford an additional 1%. I guess we're going to have to rely on our county controller to question. I'd, I'd like to say something about that. I, I, you know, right now we're in the midst of a, of a national UAW strike that they're looking at 40% is what they're asking for. Now they're not going to get it, but I, I, I don't think, I don't think what they're asking for is unreasonable at all. In fact, I think it's very constrained. Uh, I think there's other areas in the budget that we could, uh, uh, national and local defense is the government's number one priority. If we don't take care of our police officers and make sure that they stick around and find other way, other areas in our budget, 
to, to compensate them for that, I think that would be a big mistake. I, I you know, I, and I think it's perfectly reasonable what they're offering. I'm not saying it's not reasonable, and I'm not saying they don't deserve it. I'm just saying we have to make sure our budget can handle it. Jody. So, um, and I agree with you, but I also agree with Rex on the, on the option of how is it going to affect currently, we've always wanted, from my understanding, to keep 15% in the general fund. It went down to 12%. If we give them exactly what they're asking for, and again, saying not saying that they don't deserve it, Jody did give us another recommendation that we could come back at. But how does that affect the percentage, not just this year, but in the years to come? Mm -hmm. Because if we start going from 12% to 11% to 10% pretty soon, how are we going to increase back up to 15% and be able to effectively run all the departments at the county level? Well, I think we need to find some other areas to cut back in there. I think there's been a lot of wasted money this last year. For example, we've spent $120,000 on something that we did not need to do. I'm going to bring up, and that's a, the Higgins Lake uh, legal level issue that threw it out the window. Didn't have to do it this year. We could have done that in the future years when we had more money, too. So I think that we've been, made some tremendous mistakes in the past in our budget. And I, and I don't want to make a mistake by having police officers leave and or not be able to afford to stay here in Ross Common because we didn't have enough money to pay to pay them. And I agree with that. But at the same time, I don't want to, if we give them an increase and we really can't afford it, then that's going to, and we don't have other areas that we can cut down the road, then that's going to lead to layoffs. And I don't want anybody to be laid off. Yes, Mark. See, the thing is, I don't, I don't think we've made tremendous mistakes. I don't disagree that people deserve more money. Darlene and Rex both bring up good points. The bottom line, at the end of the day, we only have what we have. When I first got elected back in the day, we had 30% fund balance. We had $3 million in our fund balance. We don't have that anymore. At the end of the day, this time next, next June or July, when Anderson and associates come in, whoever is going to do our audiences, we're down to 5 or 6%. Something else could possibly occur. I want to hear from Roller how this is going to affect our budget because my decisions could be based on numbers. Police officers, everybody in this everybody in this county deserves. We can't give people what we don't have. And I think people understand that. I appreciate your comments as far as the, the police officers, they put their lives on the line. I, I get it. So do the firemen, EMS people. We've got a whole bunch of people that, that really work hard and, and a lot of sacrifice in their job. But I really want to hear the numbers game. I think it's, if I could, Mr. Chair. Yep. When, yeah, that's why we're here to hear the numbers. Yeah, I want to hear the numbers. Tony, you're up. So um, <clears throat> one of the important things that I just want you guys to realize is <coughs> you actually have the two unions. You have the command officers and then the police officers. And the Command Officers Association has asked for alternative B with the 1%. Um, the police officers ask for alternative B, no 1%. Um, if you go with the COAM and say, yes, we will do the uh, 1%, we also have to then give that to the POAM because the way their contract is stacked is that sergeants are 9% over the highest paid deputy. So both of them will incur. So that's why you don't see um, Commissioner Wolfson had asked me this morning. That's why there's not a breakdown between COAM and POAM because you can't break it down. Um, so essentially what happens if you don't do the 5% increase um, or the 5% premium, and you move with alternative two with a 1% increase uh, across the board for all affected uh, union members, you are actually looking at a, a total budgetary increase of 83,113.64. Um, and we find it, if you tell me that's what you want to do, then we'll make it happen. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's as simple as it is. Um, my big, my biggest thing is just um, noting for you that I did break it down by general fund versus road patrol so that you would see that that largest increase um, over the current does actually come from the general fund, um, the 65, 741, 11, um, just so you have those numbers when you're making your informed decision. Um, but if you make the decision that this is the way you want to go, then um, I'm there. I will tell you that certainly 
all of our employees. You heard from um, the Wage and Salary Committee at the meeting I was absent, um, that our employees are underpaid compared to other counties and people in these positions right now. Um, and I think that Commissioner Ostergren makes a good point that it's hard when you're hearing other people asking for a 40% and you're asking for 1%. Um, so yeah, if that's what you want to do, then, then I will find it for you. I think that's great. You can find it for us. Uh, number, like I said, the number one priority of the federal and the state is the protection of its people. And we're talking about local here. So uh, our police officers are our first line of defense and there is Commissioner Milburn said they're our first they're they put their lives on the line. And I think that that's a pretty high priority. And we I think we need to find it. You say you can find it, Jody. I think we should find it. Um, now, you gave a recommendation. How does that differ from what they're asking? So the recommendation that I provided under option alternative B um, actually goes directly with the counter proposal that we were given from the POAM. Um, it's the alternative with um, the locked in retiree health care and no additional increase. So that would be an acceptance of the POAM's offer and a counter offer back to the COAM. With, with your recommendation, Madam Controller, where will we be at next year, roughly? And this is, this is your, your kind of You mean fund balance wise for the general fund? It's your best guess. Probably close to 11 or 10% is my guess. Um, to go with other proposals, where will we be at? You're not going to try to think of the best way to say this. Um, if you tell me to find $65,741.11 in other budgets so that we can make that happen, then I will bring you ideas um, to make that happen. That's so my, you know, our goal is that we always budget to try to have a 15%. We have to pass the balanced budget. Um, we will start 2024 probably at a 10% um, fund balance. Um, and ideally, we'll be looking at a budget that now incorporates all of the changes that have happened this year in the courts that have prevented those fines, fees, um, and collections. Um, so we would return back to what I will call a normal budget. You know, we've budgeted with knowledge information um, and known changes so that we then can move back towards a 15% fund balance. Well, changing our, our budgetary and I should say how we ask for millages to line items, we were talking about this earlier, uh, to line items, would that be a more effective way to make sure that we were able to fund what we need to fund for police? In other words, uh, you know, a lot of people sincere, are doing that. And it's my sincere belief that people are going to pay for our police. Yeah, true. There's no doubt about it, but. Maybe not as much spongy moth. Well, I think we need spongy moth too, oh, but I think, I think it's no. It's I think people as... will pay for spongy moth before they'll pay for police in this county. Well, they'll pay then, for the police too. They, I, yeah. they. I think the biggest thing, and just to kind of caveat back. So, if you're looking at creating, um, don't feel maybe bad. Creating, they don't. <laughs> they know how the world works. Um, if you are looking at creating a secondary type of millage, and I know you guys have this discussion at your Wednesday meeting for some additional ideas. Um, for areas that could be proposed to the public for uh, millage funding. The biggest thing to keep in mind is that those millages, um, and I will use the road patrol for example. So um, Sheriff and I had a discussion last week and he said, you know, 30, 30 years ago, the commissioners came and said, let's have a road patrol millage to offset expenses from the general fund. It'll just be temporary. Um, and they started off real strong helping pass that road patrol millage. Well, 30 years later, the people that support that road patrol millage as far as um, campaigning, stuffing letters, talking at public meetings are the people who have jobs um, directly associated with the sheriff's office. So that being said, um, I think, yes, people will, will support public services um, in Roscommon County. But I think that we all need to then also be more supportive than even our sheriff's officers are. 
In your recommendation, you said alternative two to union and alternative one to non-union employees. What are non-union employees in this case? Uh, anybody that is not in a 911 employee or a sheriff's office employee, um, with the caveat that both obviously under sheriff and sheriff <coughs> are non-union employees. <coughs> So everybody that works in the courts, everybody that works in the clerks, treasurers, equalization, veterans office, my building. office. Yep. Oh, animal shelter. And how does that affect the budget? So that obviously, I don't know because you haven't given me all the information I need to put a budget together yet. <laughs> Um, so obviously we're going to see a 6% increase overall in health insurance, um, by, by doing that in that nature. Um, so. are we here today just to discuss union or are we here yes. Today? So today you are here just to discuss union. Um, and then she'll put the numbers together for everybody yep. else and bring that back to us. I'd feel comfortable going with the recommendation we got from the controller. Uh, I agree. Dar Dar Darlene was just pointing something out there to Commissioner Milburn. Could could you share? What yeah, I was just we were looking at what Jody's recommendation was. Oh, okay, okay. That's all. You know, you're very analytical about the way you do things and analyze things and everything. <laughs> and, I, and I like and I like the kind of stuff you do. So I I, I just wanted to find out what you're talking about. Yeah. You know, been around a, a while, and, and the thing is, I have the. And this isn't. This is more of a comment, kind of more of a loyalty oath. But I have the highest regard for our staff. Well, and, and, and whether the best person, or they take as much out of it as they can, take the personalities out of it. I'm going to go with the recommendation because the bottom line is, I'm not trying to parrot the recommendation. The bottom line, the decision is based on us. We're the decision makers. They put together the numbers and it's our job to, to analyze them. But at the end of the day, if the people don't like the decision, they blame the commissioners as they should. It's our job to make that decision. I'm gonna go with, with Jody's recommendation because I know that she's put time and energy into this recommendation. And I think it's gonna be the best path forward for our county. We don't necessarily like everything that's in it, but at the end of the day, we still have to make the decision and they've done the best with the best program together. So I'm going to go with the recommendation. I'm also going to go with Jody's recommendation. She's the county controller. She puts numbers together. She knows what she's talking about. Can I ask the representatives here is <coughs> what, what Jody's put together as far as the counter proposal, I guess? Much the same. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. Percent. Mm -hmm. They received the same copy of everything that you guys did. Okay. So, okay. yep, for transparency. One percent. Is that is that something you can live with? We would like we would like the extra one percent mainly because a plan B co-pays are in. That's the main reason why we're doing it. Thank you. Maybe you could do, um, just as a suggestion, kind of a compromise. You could motion to accept the POAM, counter back to the COAM, and then instruct the controller to complete the budgets and report back to you by Wednesday on whether or not you can then offer that alternative 1%. I like that. So. I like that. You're good. No, well, we like know where we're going to be, so yeah. I'm going to just say, Jody, uh, plan on what your recommendation was for this year, okay. and let's move forward. Oh, I'd like her, uh, Mr. Chair, I would like uh, to hear some more uh, from, if she can put the numbers together so we can get. Well, we know it's going to be going backwards. You know, we could vote on it if you want, but in favor of Jody's original proposal, just raise your hand. Mr. Chair, excuse me. Eric brings, Eric brings up a good point, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we're going to come back and say, end of the day, this is, it's going to be a lot of extra work. And I appreciate Mr. Ostergan's comments, 
Because the bottom line is it would be nice to be able to add that proposal. At the end of the day, the answer is most likely going to be no. That's just how I feel. Is it most likely, Jody, is that what you think it's going to most likely no, be? No, but why make her go through all this extra work? She has. She's, she's, she. She's offering. She's he offering right. an additional compromise. Yeah. <laughs> she's offering an additional compromise that we may be able to, that would be good for both our, you know, union members, and the county. If, if the my general, um, my general ex general experience in working with um, Sheriff Stern has been when it comes to trying to do something that benefits his employees. Um, he's he works very hard at that. Um, so I, I think between he and I, we could probably come up with something. I would like. I would like to hear it, as opposed to just voting this through right now and and, you know, getting getting more. It's always better to get more information. You convince me. I'll, I'll go with a recommendation to see if Jody can come up with something. I have a and question. It's always sure. It's, it might be a last ditch effort, but the bottom line is. If there's a possibility, and there's no guarantees, but there's I no guarantees. I'll, I'll I understand, go, and I appreciate your I applaud the fact that you're willing to spend your work on this. I appreciate that too. Thanks. But for I want a piece of choice. my birthday cheesecake when we get back first. Mm -hmm. What's that? Everybody's invited for birthday cheesecake too. Go ahead, Rex. Is there any way we can put something in place to help them with their additional co-pays? So they usually already have things in place for their union. I don't know, Noel, what are those two reimbursement for the emergency room, correct? Yeah. Yeah, because that seems to be that seems to be kind of like one of the issues that you brought up seems for the for the yeah. people with families it's beneficial for us to pay it out of our pocket um at that point at that point i would tell you no um but we certainly could work with um we could have jennifer come during open enrollment and have her work more specifically with the sheriff's department to work with the FSA account so that they would be able to utilize that tax deductions as well. I think that's really underutilized next door. Is it the same F FCA account that everybody has or is it a separate? That's a, that, it's a separate one where basically you put your money in pre-tax. I mean, for the, I mean, I mean, for the yep, sheriff's they, department versus. Yep, everybody has the option for it. I think it's just highly underutilized next door. Okay. So maybe if we spent more time and attention um, and we can, I mean, you can go in and we can help people with their, you know, their permission, find their total number of visits for the year in those to find out a, a good dollar amount too. So. Thanks. Thanks for coming up with that. I appreciate it. And I'm sure they do too. Well, with that being said, have some numbers for us Wednesday so we could finalize this. I'm not, I don't want to. Wednesday's going to be it. I don't want to drag it out past Wednesday. We have a budget to work on, and we can't keep on going back and forth. Public comment. That's what negotiations are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but we don't have time. The reason why, and I, I know that there's a lot of stress up here at the table. I think there is, is that nothing's been solidified. That's the one thing I can say about this board. There's no backroom deals. There's no solidification until we actually do it here. I appreciate it. I know it's got to be a tough determine to go back and forth trying to figure what we're doing. But I do appreciate Jody's willingness to be able to at least look at it. So I Thank appreciate the work. No, it's got to be stressful for the chairman. Any other discussion? Public comment? Anything on Zoom? Oh, go ahead, Paul. Yep, state your name. Paul Roth, former vice or former president of our union. Dan Cochran's taking over our union and just Deputy of the Sheriff's Department. So my understanding is you're all, you as commissioners are going to agree to proposal B, only thing hanging out there is the additional 1%. Correct. Correct. The yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion or public comment? With that, we'll go to number eight adjournment. Second, all in favor. <laughs> Thanks, man.